Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today. And today I've got a, well, let's say I've got a ship question, right? It's about Alaska. This is one of the most commonly asked questions I get um, on my Twitch stream. By the way, for those of you who aren't aware, um, if you have questions and you want to ask them, you know, uh, asking me on Twitch is probably the best idea. Link is coming up on the screen right now. Anyways, Alaska. One of the most common questions I get asked and it oftentimes revolves around I got the ship, what do I do with it? Like, what is the ship good at? Because Alaska is, out of all the super cruisers, I think, like, one of the least well-defined ones. You know, you play, let's say, an Azuma or Yoshino, and it takes you a couple of battles and you figure it out. Okay, those, those are long-range HE spammers. You just stay back and sling a lot of HE and, you know, hope you don't get deleted through the stern or the bow. You play the Russians, like Stalingrad or, uh, you know, Kronstadt, and you're like, okay, well, the Russians are kind of durable. They can do kind of battle cruiser like things. Um, you know, they can even engage some battleships at times. But Alaska, she's just kind of like an odd one out, right? Like you play her and you're like, wait, what is she good at? <laughs> her AP is supposed to have improved auto bounce angles, but her penetration is kind of poor. So at longer distances, you don't really do all that well against things like battleships or whatever. Um, her HE, well, the HE doesn't do all that great damage either. It's not like the Japanese. And what you have to understand about Alaska, and this is the key thing, is that Alaska requires multiple sort of role switches, which is which is what causes that you know complexity because you have to kind of go from one role to another. Um, so at the beginning stages of the game, typically, and this is regardless if you're top tier or bottom tier, what you're generally going to be doing is A, if you can find vulnerable cruisers that you can AP, you're going to do that. Now, assuming that this Don Square had just simply slowed down, stopped, um, and then just stayed broadside, you know, I would have gotten a good salvo. And of course, this Don Square was smart enough to realize, uh, not a good idea, you know, sort of to go away. So that's the first thing. If you can find good cruiser shots, take them. Alaska's improved auto bounce angles, along with her penetration, really is sufficient for dealing with cruisers. Now, in the event that the cruisers aren't really available for you to engage, the next thing you're really going to be looking for is... Are there early targets that I can use my HE against? Yes. Alaska's HE isn't amazing, but it is not bad. You can get some fires, you can do some damage. Think of Alaska's role in a lot of ways as sort of the way the US heavy cruisers like to be. Although she is a little bit more durable, mind you. Her um, sort of centered deck section is able to bounce um, all the battleship shells. But it's only the, the deck section, obviously. The upper belt, the bow, the, the stern area, that's still vulnerable. Um, it does offer you protection up to 380 millimeters, but don't expect too much more beyond that. Still, with her HP pool, she is quite durable. Now, you'll see in this uh, situation, even though I have a Gnaise now in front of me, the Cleveland gave me the shot. So, obviously, I'm going to take it. Because that Cleveland, whatever damage I do to him, I'm not going to be able to recover that, right? So, if you can find those early shots against cruisers with your armor piercing, go for it. Um, I've had games where I found like Buffaloes or Des Moines that just kind of disrespected me and AP Salvo at the beginning, get some good damage, and that really sort of puts a damper on these uh, heavy cruisers. Now, if you don't have shots against the heavy cruisers, next look for, you know, let's say closer ranged um, battleship targets that you can hit with armor piercing. If you want to, you can target either the superstructure. Or in some cases, if you're a little bit more lightly armored, you can target, let's say, the upper uh, belt section as well. So, for example, if you run into, like, U.S. Uh, battleships, like North Carolina or whatever, you can target that upper belt section. Um, you can usually get some pretty solid damage there, even out to a little bit of range as well. But early game, that is what you're going to mostly be doing. You're going to spend your time as, like, a U.S. Uh, heavy cruiser, essentially. You know, AP when you can, HE most of the time when, you know, stuff are angled to you that you can't really pen. However, where the Alaska shines is as the game progresses, you know, as sort of um, holes in enemy lines appear, as their sort of ships start to space out, maybe they're not so well defended on certain flanks, Alaska can lead real serious pushes. And that's because, again, that durability in terms of, uh, you know, her HP pool, her relatively good armor overall, um, underwater citadel and everything, um, she can be quite aggressive on pushes, right? So on this... Uh, you know, sort of situation in this game right now. Um, with the Cleveland dead, the Gnai dead, you can see right now there's only a single Synop and then there's a carrier that's coming around. Now, I can kind of YOLO out and be very aggressive and maybe try to charge down and kill this carrier. But what you actually see me do is actually I'll slow down and I'll stop. 
Another thing to remember with Alaska is, again, remember, even though you are, yes, more durable, yes, you're basically a super cruiser, you're still only a super cruiser. The armor is good, but it's not flawless, right? Like the Russians are significantly more durable. So what you also want to do is try to keep the fight one dimensional, right? Never end up in a situation where you're, you know, you're charging in. Whoopsie daisy. That was a bad drawing, right? That you don't want to be charging in there, trying to kill this carrier. And then what happens is the Synop comes in and turns to engage you. Because if that's the case, you suddenly have two things you really need to fight. Try to keep it one dimensional, right? One dimension at a time. Don't get yourself involved into crossfires. That's not a good thing. You want to engage targets that you can keep things in front of you so you know how to keep yourself safe. And I'm going to get chaos here. Yep. Just you watch. Get all the damage on that implac. I'm going to get cast. <laughs> I have that a lot when I play Alaska. Anyhow, with the CV out of the way, of course, what I'm going to do now is probably push quite aggressively. And the reason I'm going to push quite aggressively is because, look, that sit up is now alone. So this again is going to turn into uh, me versus him in a one versus one engagement, right? Now, obviously, I'm going to pursue quite aggressively. And if the sit up wants to turn and engage me, remember, I have the improved auto bounce angles, right? And I still have, uh, you know, belt armor that's reasonably thick. So even though the Synop has big guns that overmatch my bow, overmatch my stern, I can still try to bait shots off of my main belt armor, right? I can kind of offer him a little bit more side, try to get him to shoot there, and then try to get myself into an angle position when he does fire so the shots bounce off the main belt. Entirely viable. If I'm up against something that I can actually um, angle against, uh, let's say, for example, a Jean Bart, then I can technically speaking engage him a lot more aggressively. Although you still have to be careful because um, that's still a battleship. And if he gets just onto your side enough and he manages to pop a main battery reload booster, you could still get in trouble there, right? Okay, so Synop here. Gonna get these good shots in here. That was a horrible shot there. And there you go. Somebody else gets that kill again. All right. So once again, I've dealt with the Synop. So I'm looking at the map and I'm like, all right, there is last notice uh, destroyer in this area, but that's sure it's probably moved off because this cap is not being contested. You'll see that there's an NC relatively far away from me, actually. And you'll see me actually shoot him. And that's because the NC's upper belt armor, not particularly thick. So Alaska shells can actually go through that area and do some reasonably good damage. Okay. But here's the interesting thing, right? Take a look at what's happening here. There's a Jean Bart. And it's directly engaging with this Colorado. Bow into this, and the Colorado is trying to engage a Jean Bart this way. Probably a pretty bad fight for a Colorado. Now, I can be very, very aggressive. I can charge in there and try to help out, you know, and, and you know, as the Colorado's coming in, I'm gonna try to see if I can get maybe into a fight with a Jean Bart, right? But if I do that, there is a possibility as I am, you know, sort of turning into this open area and, you know, if I go this way, right, there's a possibility that there's something over on this island over there on the other side there that might be able to get a shot into me on the side. So once again, what I'm doing there is if I, you know, execute this maneuver, I might open myself up for um, sort of crossfire shots. I have to be very careful about that, right? Alaska, you always want to keep the fight in front of you, not suddenly have another fight pop out on your side. Oftentimes that won't end too well. So paying attention to the Colorado and the Jean Bart, trying to see what's going on here. Uh, the destroyer is gone. The Friesland, as you can see, is is pretty far away. I'm not sure where the Fletcher is right now. Not 100%. I see just I, I see torpedoes come out. So my guess is that there might be a Fletcher somewhere because um, you see another wave of five torpedoes coming in. Possibly the F Fletcher is within my radar range uh, to the north of me, right over here, um, where the Shokaku might have dropped his fighters. So it might want to pop a radar, see if there's anything within ten of me. Okay, nothing. So nothing's popped up. All right, so I'm just going to push out now. Colorado obviously has died in the direct head-on fight with the Jean Bart. But obviously with the KG-5 moving down and the NC moving away and, you know, all of them sort of move big, as the big group moving south, I don't have to worry about things in that direction, right? So now I can entirely turn my attention to engage the uh, Jean Bart. Of course, when I came out, there was a Donskoy there. So kill the Donskoy first, right? Because the Donskoy was right in front of me. Nothing to worry about. Get rid of that uh, Donskoy, then turn my attention back to the Jean Bart. Now, obviously, the Ostagotland here is going to get torpedoes off on the Jean Bart. But once again, you see this fight is directly in front of me. I can manage stuff that is directly in front of me, right? And that is the critical thing. It's like even after you've gone into aggressive mode uh, with the Alaska, still try to keep the fight in front, right? Try to make sure that the fight that is you know in front you can deal with. 
Okay. Ooh, there's the freeze stun. Even though the Ibuki might have been the uh, more interesting target to maybe shoot at because the HP pool there, the Freeze Lund is the more annoying threat. Possibly kill the Freeze Lund first. Okay. Freeze Lund's killed. And then like, take a look what's going to happen, right? I'm going to move down a little bit. And I'm going to see where this Ibuki is going to go. Whether the Ibuki is going to come out this way so then I can get a broadside shot in there or whether the Ibuki is going to try to turn, go somewhere else. In which case, I might want to cut through this gap, right? And if I cut through this gap and the Ibuki is turning, then I get a good shot on him right there. So we'll see where the Ibuki is. I'm just going to try to get some uh, vision here. Also take this cap as well. Like always try to take all the caps if I can help it. Um, peeking. See if there's an Ibuki here. Oh, okay. There we go. I see the Ibuki. Too close for me to get a good shot at. I uh, don't think he's going to have torpedoes in there. I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to slow down here because I'm not sure if there's actually torpedoes coming from possibly that Ibuki. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to poke my 4-2 turrets out and I'm going to engage the NC. Now, the NC is now only at 12 kilometers. This is plenty of range for an Alaska to actually get damage onto uh, North Carolina here. As you can tell, you can just target the superstructure upper belt and you'll generally get penetrations and, um, you know, over penetrations as well if you hit the superstructure. I think if I hit a few more shells, I might have had better damage, especially if I hit it a little bit lower, but that's all okay. It doesn't really matter. Um, get a bit more damage there. Don't see any torpedoes from the Ibuki, so obviously I think the Ibuki was just ducking into the island cover. Okay, NC's got uh, gotten taken care of. All right, there's the KG-5. All right, so what I need to do is I need to execute this maneuver where I go through this island, engage the Ibuki, and then as I'm coming out of the island, I got to turn north and I got to engage the KG-5. Always keep the fight in front of you. But you can see by this point in time... As the Alaska, if you look at my position relatively for the last little while, I've always generally been the one ahead of the battleships because the Alaska can very much well lead that kind of an aggressive push. She has that bulk to do so, right? And that's the evolution. You go from initially playing like a more passive U.S. heavy cruiser, um, you know, shooting cruisers with AP and, you know, slinging HE a lot. But then as the game evolves, you become more and more and more aggressive. Of course, even during that aggression, you still have to realize to keep that fight in front of you and stop when it is necessary. Okay, Ibuki once again takes double citadel, but I do not get the kill. Darn it. <laughs> it's 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 one of it's one of those things. I'm just always yeah, I'm always doing for that. Anyhow, now it's an easy fight. Again, you see I'm now angled towards the KG5. And the KG-5 really has no effective means of dealing with me, uh, except for HE, which means that eventually, if he ever tries to show a little bit more broadside, then I will just, uh, you know, clap him in the Citadel and kill him. So let's see what he does here. I mean, really, as soon as he starts turning, he starts giving me that, I really should be able to start getting him there. Should have had him on the Salvo, but ah, didn't get the best uh, dispersion at times. It kind of went a little high, I think. Uh, so get some penetrations and actually get the citadels. It's okay. Bring the rear turret in and I'm going to finish this um, game. Now, some people might say, but hey, look, you had some tier sevens in this game. That's not fair. And yeah, okay, that, that's fair. I mean, <laughs> a tier seven game obviously allowed me as Alaska to be more aggressive a lot earlier on. I mean, that one, I was able to take down the Cleveland, um, really sort of push that Ganais now away. And then that was really enough to uh, push that whole flank in and be very, very aggressive. Obviously, if you're playing as a higher tier um, battle where you're running into a lot of tier tens and whatever, then you're going to start the early game very much like the way a U.S. Heavy Cruiser will, right? You're going to be slinging a lot of HE, you're going to be adding that supporting fire, shall we say, you know, burning stuff. Of course, if you get a good uh, cruiser broadside, take it, but you're really going to be spending more of your uh, time doing that support role initially. However, not sure how many of you have experienced this, but there's some games where, let's say, you think things are kind of okay. And then out comes a relatively healthy Alaska. And all of a sudden, things kind of go really bad. Because the Alaska coming in uh, more aggressively, let's say, at the late game stages, has a much bigger impact, right? Because, again, the bulk, the firepower, um, the ability to really hurt you while you're trying to angle um, is all things that give the Alaska its tremendous capabilities. But you have to remember that a lot of those true capabilities of Alaska really come out later on in the game. Early game, Alaska does not do a lot of that super hyper-aggressive stuff. Um, if you try, you're probably not going to have a good day, right? Um, if you as an Alaska decide, hey, you know what? I'm going to go stick my bow there. I'm going to tank stuff. Uh, you know, probably not going to end super well unless it's stuff that you can auto-bounce, right? If you run these big battleships, they're probably going to punish you. Um, but if you stay back, add that fire support, and then transition later on, you're going to be a lot more uh, useful to your team. Anyways... Um, just a couple more beauty shots of the Alaska. Like, honestly, I find Alaska to be a really, really pretty ship. I could look at her all day. She's just 
gorgeous. Um, <laughs> so here, have these couple of nice slow flybys of it. Anyways, um, if you have any questions regarding uh, Alaska or any other comments really about the way the ship plays that you think can help other people, make sure you leave those in the comment section down below because, um, you know, it's, it's really useful to help each other out and give sort of new ideas. Anyhow, um, I wish you all a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves. Have a good one. And I'll talk to all of you again really, really soon.